Hi, I'm Lance Parkin, producer, director, co-writer, and co-star of Theo and the Professor. And this is Matt. Hi, I'm the co-star and co-writer of Theo and the Professor. And this is Jeff. Hey, I'm the uh, director of photography and the editor for Theo and the Professor. And also, this is Ruthie. I'm the producer and an actor in Theo and the Professor. And finally, this is Dominique. I'm the lead makeup artist and creature designer on Theo and the Professor. And this is our Film Courage video, Five Things We Learned Making Our Low Budget Web Series, Theo, Theo and, and the, the professor. professor. Theo and the... Theo oh. and the Professor. That was cute. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> First, what is Theo and the Professor, guys? It's our web series, and what else about it? Theo and the Professor is like a monster of the week horror comedy. It draws from a lot of like 1970s horror. I play a professor at a college, and Lance plays a graduate student. But the secret is, that's just their cover job. They really hunt monsters and ghosts and fun stuff like that. Spooky stuff. Sometimes. Sometimes funny stuff. <laughs> Sometimes the, both. That's the magic. And now it is available. Where we can find it, guys? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Yep. But we're here to talk about how we made it and the challenges we had and to help you guys not make the mistakes that we made along the way. Yeah. So anyway, that's the point of the show. Let's get to the, you know, the, bo the bones. Wait, what would you say? Let's get down to brass tacks. Yeah, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? Mm -hmm. Bottoms up! Hey, hey, leave some of that for me, man. I gotta drink it too. First... Before you go into making anything, you should take some time to build the playground before you dive right in to playing in it. Right, guys? Yes. Yeah. I think what I understand when I talk to a lot of people who are trying to put together a web series, I think they just think, I'm just going to do it, and then it's going to happen, mm -hmm. which is not how it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, It's, yeah, that it's good to have that kind of drive, but you have to have the pre-production planning in place, too, or else it's going to crash and burn. I think it's really important, um, especially if you're going to do a really character-driven kind of show is that you want to have the characters um, really, really drawn out and understood to the point where you could put them in any sort of situation and understand exactly how they would react and interact with one another, which yeah. is where we really felt um, the characters that we created had gotten to. We didn't plan the whole series out from the start, but we were definitely ready for what we were going to do with months to spare, we had a plan. Yeah, every, a lot of groundwork, every, I would say. Like, every department has groundwork from the pre-production, you know, perspective. Like, from rehearsing to writing to, I mean, what were some of the preparations you had to do, Dominique, for makeup? Like, <laughs> what is the stuff that has to be done weeks and weeks before uh, shooting? You have to uh, life cast people, taking the time to cover someone's face in, like, goop and stuff. And like sculpting, any, like a prosthetic, takes like a few weeks, and then you have to mold it, and then you have to bake it, and... Yeah, I think we had to notify Dominique months in advance for a monster yeah. every time. Yeah. What was important is that we stuck to our plan. Yeah, and it premiered right on time. Even if it almost killed us. <laughs> so yeah, that's tip number one. Yeah. Build the playground before you play in it. What was two? If it wants to take it. Number two. Money isn't everything. We realized, uh, I would say, part of the way through the production, because we were so amped that we had uh, raised the money that we'd gotten from the Kickstarter, but when we started to film, we realized how quickly that money can go by. Like yeah. How quickly Amen, you can yeah. spend it. <laughs> food for the crew. Food for the crew. Uh, food for the crew. And food, food for, for the, the crew. crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Gotta feed you know, the crew. Helping people with uh, gas money to travel. Mm -hmm. um, makeup. Makeup. <laughs> I mean, for like makeup stuff, a lot of our budget went to that just because makeup is expensive. But uh, yeah. I mean, to find a way to like cut costs on that, like <laughs> just using household items to like cut costs. And they actually look like, I think they look good. So to make monster gloves, just use like rubber dishwashing gloves and uh, cotton and latex. <laughs> so so it went that much, yeah. yeah. Necessity is like the mother of invention. And having those, having the the, the budgetary restraints, you know, I think really uh, forced us to like leverage a lot of that creativity, whether it was mm -hmm. problem solving on the set, um, you know, just using whatever we had around us. Like you really got to reach back for favors if you're trying to work <laughs> off them. Make a lot of friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah make a lot of friends. I mean, it's calling in favors from landlords I used to have 
to get those houses, <laughs> to rent those houses, and call my old school teachers from art school ten years ago. Whatever your budget is, whether it's a hundred dollars yeah. or a hundred thousand, stretch it. And like, consider when you say money isn't everything, it's true. Like, you just need to make sure that you're spending your money wisely, according to what the actual most expensive things you're mm -hmm. going to need are. And I actually think that even though we did have, you know, a limited budget in the grand scheme of things, I think that it, you know. We were able to transform that really into a strength. It does. It doesn't look like a seven thousand dollars show. I think yeah. it looks a little better. I think it looks better than that. And that was because a lot of ingenuity went into it. I think a little creativity goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what covers that? What's the third thing? All right. Number three is a fun, positive environment creates a fun, positive product, and this comes down to like balance, I guess. Because if you're having too much fun, you're not going to get anything done. But if you're in this strict environment where nobody can have any fun, they're not going to produce as good a product because they just aren't having fun. They don't want to do it. They might leave even. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. then you'd get nothing, especially on these low budgets where people aren't being paid. They're getting paid in food and credits. Exposure. In Exposure. jokes. Paying, paying them in jokes. Paying them in jokes and a lot. And creative fulfillment, of course. You mm -hmm. can't not pay people and then not expect them to be part of the band and to have their own creative differences and their own creative input. And, and, and I think yeah. a Lance fun, positive about that environment a fosters yeah. that. We made sure that everybody working on the show knew that their piece belonged to them and they could look at it and they could watch the show and they know that, like, that's my work. Like, that's a piece of me on there. You know, and I think that's what actually made the show so good is that everybody was so committed to it because they owned it, you know? Everybody owned it a little bit. Also candy. Yeah. Candy's important. Candy. Crunchy, crunchy M&M's? Crunchy M&M's are yeah. always good for morale. Morales. They help morale. Fruit snacks. Yeah. Keep morale high with crunchy M&M's and fruit snacks. That's, that's the thing we didn't mention yet. Your team should be informed, they should be empowered, and they should be fed. If nothing else, <laughs> yes. they should be fed and fed well. Ask them what they want to eat. Don't just, you know... You can just go to not, Walmart and get a bunch of stuff, but it's nice if you... you not know, you know pizza every day. Not pizza every day. Uh, let's see. Fourth, and very importantly, in my opinion as the producer, is to remember that a finished product is better than a perfect product. So you might as well get started and get something out there that you can be proud of because you can always reshoot it if it's not great the first time you do it. We certainly had to reshoot a few things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So many crews and just people in general have these lofty ideas and they need to make it perfect. They need to wait until they have a better camera to shoot it because it's not going to be as good on the camera they have. Or, you know, they need to get a big budget because they need this special effect. But then, and it, what happens if you do that, if you have that mentality, it just never gets done because there's always going to be a nicer camera to get or mm -hmm. a crazier special effect that you'll replace the other one with or whatever. Just take the resources you have and make something no matter how bad it might be, get a finished product and then leave it there, move on to the next thing and you'll make the next one better. And then people will be watching that last thing and maybe you meet some people because they see that or, you yeah. know, and, and they'll see you progressing and you'll get a bigger budget or, you know, more resources for the next project and you can build up to those lofty ideas you had for the first one, but you'll never get there just trying to make the leap. Yeah, and then it, you know, improvising yeah. and just dealing with what nature gives you sometimes. You know, yeah. sometimes the world conspires to just give you a lot of lemons and you got to find a way to make it work. Yeah, make that lemonade. Yeah, yeah we, really. talk, we talked a lot about how much you have to plan, but there's a whole other half of that where you should have a good plan, but you should be ready to abandon that plan and plan and for do disaster. something completely different yeah. at any moment's notice. <laughs> Um, our first episode, the little two, was, was a mess. It was our first shoot we ever tried. Two mm -hmm. failed makeup tests. Then we went out again to try to shoot it. It was a clear night, zero percent chance of rain, and then a monsoon showed up that last that was about forty miles wide. It was <laughs> insane. We rescheduled a year later. It was another clear weekend, mm -hmm. and then it rained the night before. The night before, all day. I seem to recall so siphoning out mud out of a pit with my mouth. Yeah, yeah. with a hose. <laughs> yeah. Garden, yeah. Hose, yeah. <laughs> garden hose and siphon dirty mud water out of a pit. It was supposed to be, it was a warm weekend the weekend before. It was like in the 70s, mm -hmm. but it got into the high 30s. 
that I evening. I think it was, was it colder, lower than that. Yeah, we were so we started freezing, and we were probably like a quarter of the way done with the shooting, if that. Yeah, probably. And yeah, this is a great yeah. case for improvising. And so, uh, quick thinking prevailed. Uh, I thought long and hard. I realized I knew a guy had a warehouse. We were near an industrial area, so I thought, why don't we just have a chase, wake up and chase us into a warehouse, and we'll just shoot it in six months. <laughs> and we finished in six months so, later. Going back to that first point about having you know, a fully built sandbox, if you're creative enough and you have that world, you can rewrite your way out of any problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any problem. And that's where you need the planning to be able to do the improvisation. Amen. Yeah. It's the last one, Ruthie. Dominique's going to this one. Okay. Number five, when you're done, you're not done. There's always more to do, um, post-production, marketing, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Tons of stuff. Shooting the show is only half the battle, I'd say. <laughs> maybe not even half. <laughs> yeah, maybe not even <laughs> half. When the show is done and it's shot and you finished it, you can pat yourself on the back. I know I, for one, took about two months of my entire life off <laughs> because that was insane whenever it yeah. was done. But you know you got to get back on the horse because there's a lot more work to go if you want to make anything of that product, you know. Yeah. Right. I mean, as as we speak, we're um, we're entered in a, a web series festival uh, that we will hopefully we'll be getting into. Um, Fingers crossed. Uh, we're going to a uh, horror convention in Co Philadelphia. Couple horror ones, couple comic cons. Merchandise. We're trying to promote the show, and like we've been done filming it since August of August. 2017. Yeah. yeah, premiered here at the Oaks in September. One thing you got to be prepared for: uh, you're gonna you make this you make this product that you and a bunch of people close to you and your friends and your team have poured their hearts into, and you all love it. But not everyone's gonna love it, and you should prepare yourselves for the less than pleasant reviews that are gonna come your way. And they came. Not they're not like it's probably a, it is a minority of them. Yeah, but they're there. You know, made for what nitwits. Mm -hmm. By Nitwits, that's our um, favorite. That's show, my favorite one. <laughs> a show for Nitwits by Nitwits, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 right that. that's one of the best things you could give us. I feel. I mean, she only did us a favor with that one. Thanks, Pearl. Whatever your name is. <laughs> it's impossible to make something, especially a piece of entertainment, especially media genre or fiction art. like this. It's, yeah. it's not. It's just not going to be for everyone. So people are going to come across it, who you know don't they just don't like it. It's not for them. Um, you know they have radically different opinions than you do, or which they, is going to happen. Or that they just don't appreciate how low budget this was. Yeah. <laughs> they, they see like That's a big, big Hollywood shows. movie, and we're on Amazon, like maybe not next to them, but in the same arena as them, and we have less than 1% of the budget that those things have. Like they spent, they like, spent more money garbage. on the craft services on one day on that movie or television show yeah. than our entire budget. <laughs> yeah, and people and that don't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I think they see it's on Amazon and like, well, I, I I should expect this is legit. It is legit, but it's they don't realize that we put ourselves on Amazon. Yeah, like, yeah, like the, yeah, we just, made it. We did it. <laughs> Us, yeah. you gotta love it so that you will stay the course. Like you have to love it enough to love it during the editing, to love it during the marketing, to love it during the good and bad reviews. Like. You got, it's got to be something that you want to really see into the future. If you're getting out to enough people that some of them hate it, like, that's not a bad thing. Well, it means <laughs> that you've surpassed your immediate circle of friends. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 That. That, that you're getting people who hate it. Yeah, yeah you're listening to your response, you know? You know, mm -hmm. the joke's on them because they watched it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that, Pearl. <laughs> I don't know what's her name. <laughs> and now we should do some wrap-up. Yeah, okay. so... And that's it. So five things we learned from making our low-budget web series. Remember, number one, build the playground before you play in it. Number two, money isn't everything. Number three, a fun, positive environment makes for a fun, positive product. Number four, don't be afraid to improvise because done is better than perfect. Number five, when you're done, you're not done. That's it. So, uh, yeah, that's our video, five things we learned while making a low-budget web series. Thanks, Film Courage, for letting us make this and for posting it on their site. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's all we got, right? Yeah. And if you want to check out this show that we've been talking so much about, you can see Theo and the Professor on Amazon. You can rent, buy, or if you have Amazon Prime, you can just watch it for free. And that's it, everyone. Uh, see you later. Thanks for joining us. I guess we're going to have to get out of here. You stutter.
Ya. Yeah. Alright. Thanks.